everybody in this video we are going to learn a little bit about, about curves in Maya so to get started we have to kind of figure out what curves are now typically when we work with objects we would use polygons but uh, sometimes polygons don't deem a uh, organic result so for instance if I have a cube you'll notice that this cube is made up of vertices faces and edges and that's all fine and dandy but what we want to do is work with curves or surfaces. And so we're going to go to our tab here and we see there's a ton of other options. Now rather than getting confused with all these options at the top, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the Create button and look at some of the options we have for curves. So curves can be created with curve tools. Curves can also be created as objects through non-uniform rational B splines. Now these are shapes that are already lofted into curves. So we have an option between NURBS and curve tools. Let's just focus on curve tools. So let's look at the different types of curves we have. We'll start with CV curve. Now if we take a CV curve and let's go to our front view, what this CV curve will do is allow us to draw with multiple left hand clicks curves in efforts to make specific shapes. So you can see I can draw kind of an organic shape here. And when I click away with my Q key and right click on the curve, I have the option between control vertex, which are kind of like vertices and polygons. Um, you also may be familiar with these because we are dealing in a vector program. And just like in Illustrator, you have curves in Illustrator. We have curve points. So curve points are not accessible in this value. We have halls, and halls essentially, again, are uh, just the bendable, bendable click points, so where we clicked on the actual curve. And then we also have edit points, and those edit points are uh, manipulatable as well. So that's the CV curve tool. And it functions slightly different than our other tools, for instance, the EP curve tool as you can see, kind of is a little more organic. Now when we're dealing with any of these curve tools, and I'll hit delete here, but when we go to access the tool, if we go to our tool settings, you'll notice that we have options to make it more or less um, organic. So obviously if we click Bezier here, we'll have more options for Beziers, and uh, you can see now I have little Bezier handles, which most of us are extremely familiar with when it comes to uh, our Illustrator program. Uh, and we can kind of adjust those. Just make sure you reset your settings um, when you're done using that curve, just in case you did not like that method. Let's go to another curve and let's look at the Bezier curve tool. So in this case, we can actually draw out Bezier curves with handles, so that may be helpful. And you can see that we have a lot of options. Uh, for instance, control middle mouse button to kind of move the items, control shift and middle mouse button. Um, we can do some other options with it. Again, we can access specific handles and make them smaller. We can make them weighted and unweighted, which is a kind of a really nice uh, method. And those are all listed right here in our tool settings. So let's go ahead and reset that tool and delete our curve there. Okay. Uh, we have another option, the pencil curve tool. This is very organic. You can see you don't have to click. It will just draw it. If I go to linear, it will be very straight no matter what I do. So it kind of straightens it out a little bit. We also have our three-point circular arc tool in which you draw three points and it will create an arc from those three points which is kind of a neat uh, method in itself so again depending on what you have to draw we'll reset that just to be safe finally we have the two point circular arc tool which when you draw two points it simply creates a perfect arc now how can we use these tools well we can do all sorts of modeling methods from these um, curves one of the things you'll notice is I'm working in my orthographic views. I am not using curves yet in my perspective view. So let's start with the basic exercise on how we can use the surfaces menu in our modeling menu set 
to create surfaces from curves. So let's go ahead and get the curve tool and we'll use the CV curve tool. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually draw a profile from the middle point, my origin point, and I'm going to draw a profile of a glass and or what I think would be a glass. Ideally having reference images will be uh, the best here, but I'm going to draw this glass and you'll see, you can see there's the stem, there's the inside of the cup coming down, and let's go to our surface menu and see the options we have. We have an option called loft, and the loft method, if we go ahead and hit that, won't really do a lot in this case. Lofting is more between two curves. So we want to make sure that you know that method is available if need be, but for this method, what we want to do is revolve. So if I revolve by default, you'll notice I get a wine glass, and that's pretty nice. Uh, if I go to my attributes here, I have a revolve setting, so you can kind of see some of the options with precision of curve and, and so forth. But what you'll also notice is it comes in as not a polygon, but it comes in as a NURB. So that's great. Um, we can convert NURBs, uh, but one of the cool things is when you revolve or you loft a surface, if you highlight, and I'll hit shift to unselect the geometry, but I'll highlight the curve, and if I go to my control vertices, this is still attached until I delete my history. So I can make all sorts of nice shapes, and kind of adjust where C fit. Again, once I delete my history, by delete all type history, that curve is no longer attached. I can hit delete and now I have my object. I can also convert this object by going to modify, convert, NURBS to polygons. And that will give me, in this case, a duplicate object in which now we have a poly version of that. So let's see some other things we can do with these curves. So let's go back and we'll delete that curve and we'll keep this ready to go. Uh, if we go to the surface menu and go to revolve, we can actually go to the option box. And if we click the option box, what we can do is actually set it to output straight to polygons. So if I hit revolve now, I will get polygon faces, vertices, and edges. And also, in my attribute editor, I get a NURBS tessellate. This NURBS tessellate is really wonderful because what it will allow me to do is change if these are triangles or quads. It will allow me to figure out if I want to do perhaps a specific number of polygons. So if I want to do a count setting and I want to make it a specific number of polys, uh, or if I want to change the fittings here. I like to go to the CV method, and the CV method has a specific tessellation option and I like to change these to the bottom numbers and actually general there, there we go and this gives me a good amount of spans that will give me a pretty decent glass if you look at it. So when I'm ready I can delete my history and I have myself a nice glass. Um, again it's a cool method to work with. Now if I don't want to make a glass and I simply want to perhaps loft a curve, what I can do is, let's create with our curve tool, let's use the two point arc tool, and we'll do one going this way, I'll click away, command D to duplicate, so now I can grab these two curves, I can go to surfaces, loft, and I can get geometry. Now you'll notice in my case my geometry is actually um, upside down from the way I want it to be. So a simple uh, flip of the normals will work really well here. But before we really do that, let's go ahead and make sure when we loft, we go ahead and loft to polygons again. Then we can go to mesh display and we can reverse our normals. And when we do that, everything comes in the way we want it and that outside mesh is really nice and we can continue to um, create whatever surface we're creating. Another option is to use a pre-built curve in the NURBS primitives and we actually have squares and circles here but the circle is a really nice primitive so under create NURBS circle 
this gives us a completely round circle that again could be specific shape. So if I grab these, kind of scale them in, and then we'll grab that and scale it up. What we can do now is make a shape from here by using surfaces, and we'll use a planer this time. So let's go to planer, set it to polygons, and go from there. Now one of the things you'll notice right off the bat is planar does not um, work super well with clean geometry. So you'll have to be pretty careful with this um, as you go forward. But overall, you can get some pretty decent results. And again, what we need to do is do mesh display, reverse normals. And now we have a plane to kind of start working with. So that's a pretty neat way to kind of get started within your um, actual object. And so just be very careful to remember to delete your history, otherwise you'll get some errors when you go to adjust it. So we'll do delete history, and I'll highlight the curve and hit delete, and now I have a pretty decent option to start with. So those were the basics of curves, and there's a lot of other things we can do with curves, but those are the essentials that you'll need to begin to model organic shapes.